Hello, I'm going to talk about bacterial and fungal keratitis. Cornea is the most anterior part of the eyeball and it's exposed to environment and prone to get infected easily. So keratitis is inflammation of the cornea which is characterized by corneal edema, cellular infiltration and ciliary congestion. Etiology there are two main factors in the production of purulent ulcer. Those can be damage to corneal epithelium and infection of the eroded area. About the etiological classification of the infective keratitis, those are bacterial, viral, and fungal, etc. So most common pathogens are Neisseria conaria, Corinebacterium diphtheria, and Neisseria meningitis and other pathogens can produce keratitis only after loss of corneal epithelial injury and about contact lens wear, Pseudomonas auriculosa can cause keratitis and other causes can be ocular surface disease, chronic keratitis, topical steroiditis and systemic immunosuppressive agents and about clinical features, certain bacteria produce characterize the corneal response and it depends on pathogens. First, Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus pneumonia. There can be oval, yellow, white, densely opaque stromal separation with clear cornea and those pictures show clinical features. First one shows large corneal infiltration in bacterial keratitis. And second one shows severe staphylococcal keratitis. About pseudomonas, there can be mucopurulent exudation, which called hypopion, and liquefactive necrosis, and ground class adjacent stroma. And those pictures show pseudomonas keratitis with hypopion. And about interior bacteria, shallow obscuration, gray-white pleomorphic separation, stromal opalescence, and corneal rings. And about management, bacterial corneal ulcer is visual treatment condition that demands identification of causative organism, eradication, and hospitalization. Treatment First, one is choice of antibiotics, standard combined therapy with aminoglucosides and phalasporins, monotherapy with fluoroquinoline. Second one is preparation of fortified antibiotics by combination with a compatible, compatible vehicle. Third one is installation of topical antibiotics which can be used hourly intervals for first five days and two hour leave response occur and gradually taper and discontinue. Fourth one is systemic ciprofloxacin. It can be used when ulcer is close to limbus. And fifth one is when to change antibiotics. Uh, we can change antibiotics if resistant pathogen occur. Sixth one is cycloplegics. It can be used to prevent posterior synechia and pain. Seventh one is stereotherapy and it's controversial. And the picture shows that deposits of ciprofloxacin in the cornea. And eighth one is causes of failure to response, wrong diagnosis by inappropriate cultures, wrong treatment by inappropriate antibiotics, drug toxicity, preventing corneal healing. And about the fungal keratitis, it can call it keratomycosis. The incidence of superative corneal ulcers caused by fungi has increased in the recent years due to uncontrolled use of antibiotics and steroids. The most common causes are aspergillus and fusarium. And those pictures show the clinical features. First one show fungal 
keratites with hypopion and second one shows flamentous fungal keratitis. The management, uh, we can reculture and do corneal pipe biopsy and antifungal therapy and therapeutic penetrating keratoplasty. And about the treatment, we have the specific treatment that includes antifungal drugs with topical antifi antifungal eye drops and stemming antifungal drugs. The topical antifungal eye drops can be used six to eight weeks, and this includes natamycin, fluconazole, and statin. The doses are shown here, and stemic antifungal drugs may be required for severe cases of keratitis. And tablet fluconazole and ketoconazole can be used two to three weeks, and non-specific treatment can be similar to the bacterial corneal ulcer and the therapeutic penetrating keratoplasty may be required for unresponsive cases in other words the complicated cases can have keratoplasty